Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It's February 7th, 2023. We got a show that we're going to talk about something that's really hot right now. Not just the markets itself. Obviously, they've had a heck of a start to 2023. But this whole artificial intelligence, AI, I've been talking about this for years, but now it's in the mainstream. I'm going to talk about what you need to be watching, what companies you need to be watching, what breakthroughs are happening, and how you can make money off this mega trend that is just booming right now. All that and more coming up on Making Money. Last year when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside. Like Riot Blockchain, before it shot up 10,090%. Digital Turbine, before it shot up 789%. Overstock.com, before it shot up 1,050%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Jacob. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to PowerGagePreview.com for a free look. Again, that's PowerGagePreview.com. Again, this is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining us. February 7th, 2023, a Tuesday down here in the South Florida studio. And, you know, we're going to get into AI, artificial intelligence here in a moment uh, because it has just been such a hot topic. It is a topic, again, I mentioned in, in the open that I've been talking and writing about for many, many years. And uh, I'll say this a few times throughout the show that when it comes to artificial intelligence, it's very difficult to kind of see it you know, and, and feel it. Um, to me, it's always been that technology that is everywhere, but nowhere. We don't really notice it's there a lot of times, but I'm going to give you some examples of how it's in your everyday life. And you're going to probably be blown away if you don't already know this how really you're using artificial intelligence, AI, right now. Whether you like it or not, uh, there are companies out there implementing it everywhere you can imagine. The exciting thing about artificial intelligence is we're on the cusp of really the next um, generation uh, of technology when it comes to AI because we're about to see it get much more easy to use for the average person and be incorporated in basically our everyday lives, which will be more noticeable. As I said before, it's everywhere, but it doesn't feel like it is. It will be much more noticeable. It may scare you, may not. You may see great investment opportunities. Again, you may run for the exits, but we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But before we jump into that, I want to talk about the markets and really what's going on so far this year. And as many of you know, uh, the market has had a, one hell of a start of a year. And the S&P rallied uh, last week to the best level uh, that we've seen since August of last year. Uh, so we hit a multi-month high. Last uh, Friday, yesterday, today, we've had a little bit of weakness. Uh, we're down about two tenths percent here Tuesday morning. Uh, we were down yesterday about a half percent in the S&P. And then again, we were down Friday as well. The reason that we've I'm seeing a bit of a sell off, in my opinion, is, is really twofold. One, we've had one hell of a rally in stocks to begin the year. So there is some natural profit taking uh, taking place right now where you know, one of our portfolios uh, for our smaller cap stocks was up over 25% uh, year to date through last week. I mean, some of these stocks are really moving. So you're seeing some people after having a very difficult 2022, use this rally to sell into it. And that's okay. You know, if that fits your strategy, that's great. Uh, sometimes it feels really good uh, to lock in a gain. Uh, we've had two sell alerts for our newsletters uh, so far this year. Both were to sell half a position. And the reason I did that is because both hit gains of 100%. So you take back the money you invested in it and the rest, that's house money you're playing with. Uh, so it's not, not your money. You got your initial money back. The rest is, is moving out there and still believe in the investments. But when you have such big gains like that in this type of market, it's nice to bank a win, especially after a rough 2022 for growth stocks and innovation stocks and really investments in general last year uh, at a very rough year. So that's kind of the strategy we're seeing here now. But I want to show you a chart here of the S&P 500. And as you can see, the S&P 500, as I mentioned, uh, rallied to a new multi-month high, pulling back a little bit. And I will tell you, folks, this is uh, actually an extremely bullish pattern that we're seeing right now. We have that white line uh, that's drawn down from the upper left to the bottom right here. And that is a downtrend line. That was a series of 
uh, lower highs. And I could put one on the bottom too. There was a series of lower lows. Well, in December, when we pulled back, we didn't hit a lower low. That's step number one. Step two is the break above that downtrend line, that white line, which we did uh, with vengeance. We kind of blew right through it. So we broke the downtrend uh, as of right now. What typically happens after you break a downtrend is you run up as we did, and then we have a bit of a, what I call a consolidation slash healthy pullback. And we're seeing that right now. Uh, a little bit later volume on the SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 on the downside, which is good. Meaning there's big buyers going into the market. When we sell, it means there's less volume. Uh, so that's been a very good sign here for the S&P 500 and for the overall market. Also, if you take a look at this red line and blue line that's on there, the red line is the 50-day moving average and the blue line is a 200-day. When the red crosses above the two, the 50 above the uh, red above the blue, the, the 50 above the 200, uh, that's typically a very bullish sign longer term for the markets. The opposite happens when a downside. We saw the opposite happen last March and the market went down for the next 10 months. So we're seeing a lot of really positive technical factors uh, take place right now in the market and combine that with inflation coming down, combine that with uh, interest rates kind of settling where they are right here. And really with some bullish news, really, I mean, we, we, the reason the market was down uh, on top of uh, what I just talked about last week was uh, the jobs number that came out on Friday, much better than expected. So right now, uh, good news is actually considered potentially bad news for the market because the stronger the house or the stronger the, the labor market looks, uh, there's more fear that the Fed's going to be more aggressive to fight inflation, therefore raising interest rates more than they may have to. They raised them 25 basis points uh, in February, uh, first day of February. Uh, it was kind of baked in. So the next Fed meeting, as I mentioned, will be in mid-March. And the expectations right now are for a 25 basis point hike. And I thought there was a good chance that it could actually be zero. They, they paused. But I, I'm kind of thrown out the window right now because after that very strong jobs number last Friday, and again, keep in mind, we're going to have another jobs number the first week of March. So really between the first week of March and mid-March when the next Fed decision comes out, will be a very important time for the market because if we have another hot um, jobs number, meaning strong jobs number, it's probably going to put quite a bit of pressure on the Fed to not only raise rates 25 basis points, but keep uh, a bit of a narrative that they may, again, at the next meeting after that, raise rates again. So that's going to be kind of the wild card between now and then, and the market's going to be likely volatile around that, just so you know. But again, overall, as I just talked about, the technicals look good on the market right now. The way things are acting, things look really well. Inflation is coming down dramatically and will continue to come down dramatically. And anybody who does not agree with me with that, I would love to debate you, but it's just, it's not a fact. Inflation is coming down. Rents are rolling over. Home prices are rolling over, which make up one third. Even look at some food prices. I saw a great little thing on, on the Super Bowl coming up showing food prices. Wings are down. A lot of food's coming down year over year, and that's going to be reflected in the CPI number. Not everything's coming down. Some things are still expensive. Look at natural gas, folks, in like absolute doldrums, getting smoked. Oils come down. Oils back down in the bear market. So we're seeing a lot of prices really come down. And again, that will be reflected in the CPI. Unfortunately, government numbers seem to be a bit lag. So we're not seeing the truth of what's going on out there right now. So keep that in mind. But again, what I'm trying to get at here is the technicals look good. And keep in mind, the market typically bakes in the future. The action of the market is typically smarter than us. And it's showing right now that things look pretty damn good. And I love the fact that most people are really negative right now because that usually bodes well for us because the more negative people are. And again, I just saw this weekend, the amount of money sitting in money markets, in money markets, not in bonds, but in money markets, sitting in cash, basically, getting little to nothing in interest is at an all-time high. That money has to go to work at some point because people realize even with inflation at 2 or 3%, they're losing money. That money is being burnt in that little account that they have. So things are going to change, trust me. So again, markets right now look good, but let's take a look at artificial intelligence. And the hot topic over the last couple months even, you know, a lot of, a lot of people have been reaching out to me is uh, what the, what's called chat GPT. And uh, chat GPT, which is what's called generative AI, artificial intelligence. And um, generative AI, basically what it does is it describes any type of artificial intelligence out there that can be used to create things, anything from uh, pictures to videos to text 
uh, to audio, music, to code. People use it to write code. Uh, really anything. It, it's used to create. Generative means to build, create something. Um, we're seeing this being done already in a lot of different areas. Uh, we see it in media. Uh, you see it um, in drug development. We, we've seen that, and that's going to be a big area. You see it advertising, um, gaming, uh, digital art, obviously, because it can create digital art for you. Uh, you know, this, this, this next really generation of artificial intelligence is going to uh, change the world. Honestly, it's, it's really going to change the world. And UBS, the big financial firm, did a study and, and realized that chat GBT, GPT, or chat, chat GPT, they reached 100 million monthly active users, me being one of them, in just two months. Two months to 100 million users. Let's put that in perspective. It took Instagram 30 months, 15 times more. It took Spotify, the music app. Again, I use both these things. 55 months. It took Uber 70 months. Google Translate, that's used all around the world for people to communicate, it took 78 months. And even the hottest thing in the world, the one thing I don't have, TikTok, which obviously huge Chinese contingency behind that, so it opens up to a lot of people, took that nine months. So still, this only took two months. This shows how big this is and how big this is going to be. So what are we seeing happening because of that? Well, we're seeing companies such as Microsoft. The company behind ChatGPT is a company by the name of OpenAI. Well, they've recently increased, they being Microsoft, they increased their investment into OpenAI. They're actually going to have an event later today from their headquarters in Redmond, Washington, where they're expected to talk about an even further and bigger investment into OpenAI. Again, the company behind ChatGPT. Some are saying that this deal could be worth upwards of $10 billion into this and uh, that this could truly be a game changer. And we're seeing a lot of companies, I mentioned a couple more that came out recently in the news, really coming out with big news related to generative AI just in the last couple of weeks. Um, Webbush Securities came out and basically said that this is an arms race in artificial intelligence. Again, I've been saying this for years. The companies that are able to really be the leaders in artificial intelligence will be the next multi, multi-trillion dollar companies. They will be the world leaders. And you think about software 20, 30 years ago. The companies that are able to create software, Microsoft, and change the world were the leaders. Now that next generation, again, involves artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence. You've probably read some of the articles about this, how... You can ask real questions. It's not like you type into Google. It, it is amazing. You just go and play with it. Download ChatGPT and play with it. It, it, it. It's like you're talking to a person. It's not like you're talking to Google. And keep in mind, Google to me, when it was built, was built as an AI company. It led to other things, obviously, such as the search leader, search engine leader, I believe it was about 90% market share. Bing is about, what, 9% or something like that? 90% market share, but it's artificial intelligence. That's why it's creepy when you type in one letter and it fills out what exactly you're looking for. That's artificial intelligence using everything you do on here and taking the, that, that data, putting it through artificial intelligence and trying to anticipate your next thought. As scary as that sounds, as weird as it sounds. How many times have you typed something in and it's something you just talked about in a room. That always freaks me out. Are they listening to me? I don't know. But they that, become that smart. This next generation of artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is head and shoulders above that. Once we put quantum computing into this, which I've talked about, I believe, a couple months ago, which is the next generation of computing power, which is not even comparable to the computing power we have today. You combine that with the data that we have, with the artificial intelligence intelligence that we will have at that time. We will be able to have drug discovery in literally a week. It's going to be mind blowing. Again, scary to some, to me, fascinating as to where this is leading. So again, by the time you watch this, Microsoft may have come out with their announcement, but they're going to have a big announcement um, coming out later, uh, later today, this Tuesday, 
uh, about uh, potentially further investment into OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT. So there's a couple other companies we want to take a look at here. You know, a lot of companies are trying to be the leader as far as um, the chips, the semiconductors behind artificial intelligence. Um, one such company, which again, a company I've talked about in the past, uh, I've liked this company for a long time, uh, but again, nothing here is a buyer sell recommendation, is NVIDIA, NVDA. They do software development tools and they help build artificial intelligence applications. So this is a company that has always been really kind of a leader when it comes to semiconductors and artificial intelligence and continues to be a leader. And I believe will be one of the largest players in AI uh, when all things are said and done. Um, AMD, one of their competitors, Advanced Micro Devices, symbol AMD, also uh, moving into AI, but a little bit further behind NVIDIA, in my opinion. Uh, we have the big names out there. I talked about Microsoft. Uh, we have IBM and Google, both making big investments in AI. Um, uh, Google, for example, uh, you know, talking about them earlier, they, they, they're using that already, in my opinion. Uh, and they said uh, just yesterday uh, that they're going to unveil their version, their chat bot, their version of chat GPT uh, to a wider public release uh, coming up in the near future. And they, they, the name of that is Bard, B-A-R-D. Um, you know, they, the, uh, the CEO, Sundar, came out and he said that their chat bot, which is called Bard, would be powered by language model for dialogue applications. It's basically Google's form of artificial intelligence. So again, you have ChatGPT blowing up, you have Microsoft investing it, and now you have Google coming out. And then just this morning, waking up to Baidu, which is B-I-D-U, which is a big um, tech company and big player in artificial intelligence, a leader in autonomous uh, vehicles uh, over in China, they unveiled their AI chatbot uh, by the name of Ernie. They said it's going to come out in March. They announced that it's going to come out in March. And uh, Baidu shares on that. Uh, doing very well. It, it, they popped this morning before the open. Um, again, you're seeing a lot of money going into this. And I, I truly believe people realize how big the future is. And here's a look right now at Baidu of about 9% here this morning, uh, trading this morning at the best level since last March. So about 11 month high here for Baidu. It's had a hell of a run from 75 up to 156 now. So up over 100% from the low in November. Again, a Chinese company that is that is kind of a big leader over there in AI, uh, autonomous vehicles, and a few other areas. But that came out this morning. That announcement came out this morning. And to give you an idea of growth, um, according to Gartner, which is a big research firm, AI software, uh, the software market for AI is expected to increase 21.3% um, uh, from 2021 to 2022, up to 62.5 billion. Uh, they look at the AI semiconductor business, which, of course, I just talked about. It was worth about $23 billion in 2020, looking to be upwards of $70 billion in 2025. So you're looking, you know, about almost, what, that's 3x, you know, 3x in a matter of five years. So you're seeing, again, big money going into this area. Um, we have companies such as Amazon, which they use that already. That's why when you log into your Amazon to buy something, they recommend something, most likely you're going to need it. Uh, but they, they, they marry the AI to help customize online offerings for their customers. Uh, they also marry that with robotics that use AI in their fulfillment centers, obviously. I mean, that's the reason we get things so quickly. Uh, they use that as well. Uh, they use it in some of their um, their fresh stores now, where you, the Amazon Go stores, where you can just basically put everything in a bag and walk out. They use AI for that. Uh, there's two Whole Food stores now that are using the walkout payment technology, which is awesome because you just really go in, throw it in your bag, and they know what you have, and you walk out. Uh, that is, that's RFID connected to that as well and chips. Uh, but again, they're using that at the same time. So I, I'm mentioning all these big names. Um, another company that was public in the past, uh, Intel bought them and then Intel spun them off. Uh, that company is Mobileye. And that's a big player uh, when it comes to um, autonomous vehicles. You can see here, uh, this chart's amazing. It just came public uh, in late October, kind of when the market bottom. So it actually came out at a really nice time. Uh, but fell down about 25 bucks in November, about 41 and a quarter right now. But you can see how that, that stock has done extremely well. Um, and again, this was spun off from Intel. But Mobileye uh, really is all about driver assistance systems, autonomous driving. If we get to AVs, which we will, autonomous vehicles, Mobileye is going to be a major, major player. Uh, so that's it's it's one of the pure play ways to play autonomous vehicles uh, because they have been around for a long time. Again, it was publicly traded back in the day. 
Intel bought it and then they spun it back out. You see that happen a lot of times. Uh, smaller companies get bought up by big ones. They kind of take them under their wing and then spin it back out, which uh, uh, Intel did here. There's also a couple of um, uh, ETFs as well that track um, artificial intelligence. And, you know, I went through a couple of them. I'm going to show you a chart here really quick um, of, one, of, of how they've done. I picked three of them and how they've done so far this year. As you can see, uh, they've all done very well, 18%, 19%, 22% year to date. And I'll talk about the three of these in a second. Uh, the thing is, though, um, you, you look at this and there's not many pure play artificial intelligence. You know, obviously, IBM's a play, Microsoft's a play, Google's a play, Amazon's a play. But they're not pure play. NVIDIA's a play. They're not pure play. Um, and by that, I mean, they have a lot of other business uh, divisions that are going on as well. Do a lot of them incorporate artificial intelligence? A hundred percent. The thing is that you have to keep in mind that you're not getting that just pure play artificial intelligence. So there's a couple out there. So um, those ETFs, as I mentioned, have done very well this year. A hot stock this year as well, a company that went public a couple of years ago. Um, I'll show you a chart of it here in a second. Is um, went public back in uh, late 2020. And uh, this is C3.ai. This company went public back in the fourth quarter of 2020, rallied up to over $180 a share, fell down to, uh, man, a low of, heck, down around 10 bucks uh, a share. And now, as you can see in the chart, has really come back up to 25. But this thing got absolutely crushed. And this is C3.ai. More of a pure play, but look at the volume, folks, on this right-hand side of this chart. Huge green bars, big money coming into it. And again, what that tells me is we're, what we're starting to see, and it's all led by ChatGBT getting in the headlines of how important artificial intelligence is going forward. The one caution flag I'm going to throw at you right here is when a stock goes from 10 to hit 30 yesterday, down to 25 now, 3x in a matter of a month and a half, that's not sustainable. I'm not, again, not recommending C3 AI right now, symbol AI, or any of these others. Put them on your watch list because I think there's a, a huge future in AI and some of these related companies. That being said, it's so hot right now. I hate when things are hot. I like to own them when they're not hot. And this is such a long-term trend that it will come to a point where these stocks aren't the hot stocks anymore, even though behind the scenes, as I always say, innovation doesn't sleep. I don't give a shit about bear markets or recessions, folks. The people out there that, that, that bash growth and bash innovation is just mind-blowing to me. Sure, you can own boring companies. That's fine. But if you truly think that innovation is dead, then this world is dead. We've been innovating for thousands of years, and that's not stopping. And we have the opportunity as individual investors to back companies that are changing the world. They don't go straight up. They have bad years like last year. It's okay. But these trends are not stopping. Artificial intelligence is not stopping anytime soon. If anything, it's gaining more steam. So we need to think big picture and stop being so narrow-minded. We have to look through the telescope, the binoculars, not through your readers. Or most people look in a rearview mirror behind them of what happened in the past. We have to look forward to the future. It's the only way you're a successful long-term investor over time. You have to look forward. Um, I'm telling you, folks, I've been doing this a long time. And yes, there will be bad years like last year. That being said, that is what creates great long-term opportunity in the stock market. So I'm going to continue to do my deep dive here on artificial intelligence. Um, we've done a lot of work on this already. Um, but again, you know, I, I talked about these ETFs. And what, I don't say scares you, but, but the reason I stay away from exchange traded funds, and I was a big proponent when they came out 20 years ago. I thought they were great for the market and really helped a lot of individual investors. That being said now, when I look at, for example, the Wisdom Tree Artificial Intelligence and Innovation ETF, the symbol is WTAI. It's been around over a year. I'm going to tell you the top, the top stocks in it. Amberella, AMBA, uh, STM Micro, STM, Infineon, Taiwan Semi, NVIDIA. Uh, C3 AI, that's this number six holding. Uh, but, you know, going through these, a lot of these, yes, they have exposure to artificial intelligence, folks. But again, I mentioned NVIDIA, which is number five holding in, in this ETF. It just doesn't, um, it's not a pure play by any means. And you will gain some exposure. 
I also always believe that you build your own artificial intelligence portfolio, whether it be through three stocks or 10 stocks, whether it be you're putting $100 in or 100 grand and you divide it equally and you create your own ETF. There's no fees that way. There's nothing to worry about. Another one, the uh, Robo Global Artificial Intelligence ETF, which is symbol THNQ. Top Holdings, Rapid7, RPD. C3 is number two, symbol AI. Uh, Alteryx, AYX. NVIDIA is number four. Atlassian is number five, symbol TEAM. So very different. So you can take a look at these, these ETFs that track artificial intelligence have very different returns because the holdings are very different uh, in them as well. So when you blindly go into these ETFs just because it has artificial intelligence in a name, you must look at the holdings. Now, please always remember that because um, there's, there's always going to be a bit of a difference. And again, don't forget you're paying an expense ratio. The Robo Global charges 0.68%. Um, the, uh, what's the other one I talked about? The, the wisdom tree, uh, they charge 0.45%. So you can have a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but they, you have some money coming out where you can build your own, control your own. And that's what we do with my newsletters. We build our own little sub portfolios. We look at the gain as a whole, not the individual stocks in, but how is that done as a whole? And that is the way that you can si become successful long-term investing, create your own portfolios within your larger portfolio folks. So I'm going to continue to work on artificial intelligence and AI. It blows my mind. It's so neat. I was using Chat GPT this weekend, typing in random stuff. And it's it's amazing what, what comes back. I would say just go play with it and your mind will be blown, folks. I'll tell you that much. Uh, coming up on Thursday's show, just give you a little preview. We have Paul Schatz coming up, a, a, a buddy of mine I've known for over a decade. Uh, he used to be a guest when I worked at Fox all the time. Uh, he is extremely bullish on stocks now. And I'll tell you, he's not a perma bull like me. He's negative a lot of times. I'm excited to get his thoughts and what stocks and what sectors he likes. That's coming up on Thursday's show here at Making Money. But again, folks, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you Thursday morning here at Making Money. And don't forget, I'm Matt McCall. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.